Hi! Welcome to the Ruby vs. JavaScript um, discussion we're going to have today. We're going to focus on the constructor function versus Ruby's class. Now, I figure that the people who are watching this video are very familiar or more familiar with Ruby versus JavaScript. I was only introduced to JavaScript this past week. So I'm only going to really compare the two of them in a more simplistic manner by showing examples of how each work and how they're very similar and yet how they look pretty different at the same time. So why don't we start by looking at Ruby? Now in Ruby we know that classes are kind of like our blueprints and blueprints allow us to make multiple items with a similar with the same type of like variables. In this case we're thinking about instance variables, right? Certain characteristics we want to pass on to each object. So without further ado, let's create a class called item. Um, remember that in the uh, name for a class is that the first uh, letter has to be capitalized. Next, uh, we want to basically create our initializer, our initialize method, which is what allows us to even create the objects in the first place. And it's here that we have to think about the input. So when we want to create a new object, what's the input going to be for us to, you know, to uh, pass on to this new object? And for our purposes, we're going to make it simple and just talk about the name of the item. So that's name. And that's it, right? Did I, no? Well, is that it? No, of course not. Now we want to create our instance variable. Now you probably recall that instance variables are kind of cool because what it allows you to do is that every instance of the class being used, your this the, this that instance will have their own instance variable. And you know, and that's very different from something like a class variable. If you set up a class variable for a class, every item made from that blueprint will share that same exact um, class variable, right? So that's a very important thing to think about. Now, this allows us to create the object right off the bat. And you probably know just from how things end up working that, you know, we could create the object from here. So why don't we do that? So let's create our object. And I'm thinking we're going to make these people. So let's create an object named Joe. And we're going to set that equal to its um, new item, new. And we're going to call him Joe, right? And we're going to put a P in front to kind of just show everything how everything works. And as you can see on this right side, you can see our item number here. And you can see the instance variable here is equal to Joe. So right off the bat, this very simple class is allows to create a simple object. So why don't we create a couple of different methods to give this object a little more heft, right? So let's, we're going to do something called define name. Now, we can get into the discussions of HTTR readers, HTTR accessors. But for, for what we're going to do here, I figure we might as well just create the name for the time being. So, and since we already defined what name is, all we have to say is name. And that is it. Think of, keeping in mind that an HTTR reader, which I can write out right here, write that, that's an HTTR reader would also do the same thing. But we can discuss that at another time. And finally, let's just give this one other function. Why don't we tell it to say, tell this object, Joe, to say something. So define slogan. And we're gonna say puts common use in Ruby, right? Putting out to the console. And why don't we tell him to do something like my name is name. That's it. Very simple, make sure to end it, right? and make sure you keep all your ends in check. And this is how we make objects. And to see how everything works, we're gonna work off the fact that we already have the Joe. We're gonna ask for his name, and we're gonna ask for a slogan. And you can see here, it gets the name over here on line 16. You can, we ask for the name, and there's Joe in quotes. And the slogan comes out as, my name is Joe. And that's very straightforward, right? This is how we can make new objects using a class in Ruby. Well, you're probably thinking, what about JavaScript? What do we, what's, di what's different? Well, JavaScript's pretty interesting because it's got, it, it actually it works very similar in Ruby. And let's switch over. You see our previous Ruby code is right here. And so we're gonna create our 
basically our own example of how we can do the same exact thing in JavaScript. One thing about JavaScript is that when we're setting like variables and all that, you know, that type of some information, it requires us to type in this keyword card bar in front. Because we're naming something. And oh, sorry, not Joe. We're gonna create a new what we what they call a construct constructor function. And so think about it. Like if we were doing something similar in Ruby, what would be the first thing that come to mind? What would be something that's similar? Well, one thing that's similar off the bat is that we have to capitalize this. So for these constructors, you have to capitalize the first letter. And then we're going to say function. It's, these constru it's a constructor function. And remember how we had initialize earlier at line 8? We can, that's asking for an input in order to, uh, it's an input required to make the object, right? Well, it's the same thing here. We're going to ask us to basically create an input that would be end up being applied through this blueprint. So we're going to do the same exact thing. We're going to use the word name. And one big thing here with with JavaScript is that there's a lot of the curly brackets are probably even more prevalent. We use in Ruby. There's a lot of them. Um, it's used for code blocks in JavaScript. It feels like everything is a code block. So you'll end up using curly brackets more often than not. In addition to semicolons, which is its own bane of existence in a way. <laughs> but it works fine. So remember we had instance variables earlier, like um, the, that something that can be referred to throughout for, throughout the class. There's something similar called this and this name. So this this is kind of similar to the at symbol here. And we're in the same purposes referring to it just as name. Pretty straightforward. Big thing here though is making sure we have our semicolon. Now, let's compare what we have thus far. We have the name. We have we covered initialize in a way, right? So, the last thing we need to do is get the slogan at line 20 and put that on line 3. So let's put this slogan is equal to my name is plus, well we already defined what the name is here, so name plus, let's add a little exclamation to it. Perfect, right? Looks nice. So now, that is it. This is our object constructor. This is our constructor function. It looks a lot simpler, right? It's actually, it has more punctuation and more brackets than I would like, but it actually works very well. So how can we test this? Well, console log is our version of puts and p's and everything here. So we can't put p or puts here, so we're going to do a console log check. So let's do a um, console log, right? console log. And we're going to ask us, what are we looking for here? Well, let's just look for Joe. Um, yes, and we'll ask for his name. And why don't we... Oh, sorry, I jumped the gun. We have to create the item, right? So let's create, we, once again, we're using var. We're going to create a Joe. And we're going to set that equal to new underscore item, oh no, no underscore, new space item, and what's our input? Name Joe. Let me just cross that out, my apologies. And as you see here, um, this line here we just created is very similar to line 25. 6 and 25 are actually very similar in how they look, right? Except there's no, there's no punctuation here, and it almost seems like they're swapped. So why don't we just I don't know. Let's we'll see if it runs anything. Well, obviously it won't run anything, but the objects, if you want to see what it looks like. Oh, unexpected token. Oh no, sorry. This was not the best way to look at it. <laughs> Instead, the best way to see how this works right now is why don't we just why look at Joe and ask for his name. And that's where we can apply the uh, console lock. Joe, their name. And we can see here, his name is Joe. Now let's ask for a slogan. So let's ask for Joe, slogan. My name is Joe. 
So we looking at it, it looks like we would also do Joe period slogan or Joe period name, but instead of doing puts or p, we would end up using console log instead. That's a difference as well. Now we can do something interesting here is that, um, and kind of like what we did uh, with slogan up here, slogan over here, maybe we can um, just make it do something up here where we can say, why do we ask console log to just work automatically when we call upon it, this object. So let's see here, right? Like that. So let's see what happens. We don't necessarily need this right now. We have a new item. As you can see, when we ran this, uh, we, when you ran it, Joe, they ran, it ran number six, and I, I told number six to say, run number three. So by running line number six, which is the creation of Joe, it automatically comes to the console log and says, my name is Joe. And so with that, it kind of makes you wonder, like, which is simpler, which is easier. I think that they're both valid in, their, in very different ways. Obviously, I showed you a very simplistic Ruby class, and I showed you a very sim simple, simple car, um, constructor function. And I think, for some, Ruby's version is easier to read and kind of go through and understand. However, for those on the go, I would say that the constructor function is actually pretty concise and nice. Um, and it's actually very easy to make an object. But um, I'm sure as we go through and try to and learn to work with these on a more one-on-one -on -one basis, we will find that that one is how they're, they're all they're both very useful in their own different ways. So thank you for watching or listening, and I will hopefully look forward to my next video. Thank you.